who have made the Illawarra team of the year, many of whom, as you saw at the top of the program. So it is time on, and South Sydney are running right to left on a stadium here at Wollongong that is not yet finished, but it's going to be magnificent when that time arrives. And they're wearing the Illawarra Steelers jumpers to commemorate, as I said, the naming of the, the team of the century as Michael Wayman brings it out right in front of the uprights up at the northern end of the ground. He, he almost made a mess of the play of the ball, but eventually it got a, got a foot to it. And Cray it is that takes it another few metres up the ground. He'll play the ball 35 metres out from his own line. Darius Boyd does a little bit of light stepping, challenging South Sydney. But he's put down and tackled by David Tyrrell and also Eddie Pettiborn. And now the 16 for the Dragons takes it ahead. And that is Trent Merrin who plays it on halfway. It's spun away from Nathan Feen and gone onto the boot of Jamie Soward. And then a lovely takeover there by Nathan Merritt. Their leading try scorer for the year. 12 tries this year. He's been leading try scorer at Redfern since 2006. This is uh, McQueen now, the winger. Yeah, it's a great take there from Nathan Merritt. One of the responsibilities of the back three, trying to get to those James Soud kicks on the full. Merritt did a wonderful job as Ben Ross takes it forward. I feel like I'm playing on the left wing for South Sydney. We are that close with these new media facilities. You're quite right. We'll get a shot of that sometime during the day just to give you an idea. We're broadcasting almost from ground level which takes me back to the days of broadcasting from a card table on the sideline alongside tiger black and frank hyde and cole, and cole pierce and those sort of people john o'reilly and it's not easy believe me when you've got no elevation but we'll do the best we can the pictures of course coming from a much more elevated position as the ball is kicked down the ground by john sutton and his nightingale bringing it back to the 30 meter line but it's a wonderful crowd in here over on the hill, there are some, some uh, great sights of uh, particularly the red and white army. They've flocked to the hill area as it goes away from Ben Hornby and into the hands of Mark Gasmier and then away to Matt Cooper. And he's gone through. Cooper's made a break down the left side. And Merritt tries to get between him and the winger Morris. Morris steps, goes in and puts the ball down. 14 tries now for Ben Morris from his last... Or should I say, from nine games here at Wollongong. And that left side raid, so successful for them last year, aided by some awful defence on the right-hand side for the Rabbitohs. Midfield attacking range, Ben Hornby, second man play to Mark Gaznia, on to Matt Cooper, up against Chris Sando. That was a mismatch. Another despairing dive. Matt Cooper drew Reese Wesser, and he stepped back inside Brett Morris both Wesser and Nathan Merritt. Well, you can imagine the South Sydney coach all week saying, what's the left side attack? What's the left side attack? Whatever you do, what's the left side attack? So what did they do? They watched them. They stood back and watched them. They backed away from them and gave Cooper just a free run. Breaks into the backfield, links up with Morris, and Morris did the rest. That was awful defence. And a different configuration there too with Mark Gaznia coming from right side to left. Normally Darius Boyd would play a role over there, but I think he actually played the football. So Gaznia slotted across, and isn't that a great sight to see him moving all around the field? So Jamie Sound then from the 20-metre line is just inside that eastern touch line. To make it 6-0, it's on its way. The touchies haven't moved. They didn't have to budge. And a further two points on the board. So the worst possible start for South Sydney, Andrew John sideline today. Yeah, have a look at the spacing on the edge of the rock from South Sydney. You see Dylan Farrell. He's the third man in. Look how close Chris Sando is there when Gaznia comes around the back. Matt Cooper's got far too much room. The right foot away to fend. Look at that. You can't give a player like Matt Cooper that much room. He'll blow you away all day. They'll get plenty of ball to today, the, the left side from George Illawarra. Here I was talking earlier about Greg Inglis up against Mark Gaznier, and as Peter pointed out, Mark drifted from his right side across to the left side, and he really did the job that Darius Boyd does. And of course, uh, it's not that often you see centre passing to centre in the modern game, but here's the ball going away to Ben Cray, and he is often the recipient of a pace. He's lost the ball. He's lost the ball. It's a penalty to them, though. It's a penalty to St George of Awara. Hand on the ball, apparently. And the fans on the hill loving this at the moment. Have a look at them over there, Rabbits. 
the big red V Army. They love their Sunday footy down here in Wollongong. That's the best seat in the house. You might think you've got the best seat in the house. That's the best seat in football. Well, Up there you, on the hill with the Army. Yeah, you speak with experience. I mean, it was one of your bravest performances when you went over there at Cogra just recently. You don't talk it up, you go and do it. Here's Nathan Fiend with a dummy to an inside runner before he goes out and picks up Michael Wayman, and Wayman will play the ball. 22 metres out from the South Sydney line, running towards the southern end, and the red jumpers are the Dragons, Ben Hornby. Here's Darius Boyd, and away to Matt Cooper it goes, and Cooper down in that corner is so close. He's only a couple of metres from the corner post. Cooper playing it back to Boyd, and Boyd to Hornby, Hornby to Fiend, and Fiend lets one go, and then he goes to South, goes to Gasnier, Gasnier, away to Martin Gale. If the left side can do it, so can the right side. Nightingale has scored for the Dragons. That's beautiful stuff. That's just great to watch. Left side raid, got close with Matt Cooper, then came back the right, same formation. Had a lot of success with this early in the year. They were going to Mark Gasnier. In fact, Jason Nightingale was outscoring Brett Morris. And Mark Gasnier outside his man, Greg Inglis. McQueen, well, he got caught betwixt and between. And Nightingale crosses. It is all one-way traffic here and looking very ominous for the visitors. Well, all the playmakers in that one. Hornby to Fiend to Soward. And the cleverness of Soward not to try and do too much with it. He, he realised that Gasnier had space. So he just gave him the ball and allowed Gasnier's speed and experience to do the rest to put Nightingale away. Very well executed. Lovely stuff. An all representative back line for the Dragons today. In fact, I remember Jason Nightingale, the try scorer, uh, talking about, never mind about the left side, he was talking with Mark Gasnier. So never mind about the left side. He said, we We'll put it right up to them this year. Watch out for the right side. Well, that was a perfect example of the fluency that they can operate with on both sides of the park. He looks to have found something with his goal kicking, this boy. I, I've just watched him striking the ball the last few weeks. The ball is going so straight. I hope I don't mock him, but he's in really good form at the moment. But here he is from the tee bar, and it's on its way, and it looks like, oh, it's taken an upright. And so we'll break from down at Wollongong. It is 10 nil in favour of the home side. And a welcome to our networks taking us today, wherever you are around the Man, rugby league Roger. community. Roger, let's work back on the 10 metres, mate. blowing time back on again. Shane Hayne and Adam Devsich are in charge of this game today. Hayne, in fact, in his 242nd game of top-line refereeing. Been around a lot longer than, than I thought. As uh, Bo Scott it is, who play the ball for the Dragons, back to Nathan Fien, and then Trent Merrin, and Merrin is taken there by Corrigan. In the almost red hair, red hair, ginger hair. Crocker going in with an assist, and David Tyrrell playing up in front row today. Here's Ben Kramer. And uh, looking for the ground, about seven or eight metres on his own side of halfway. It's come away for Ben Hornby, and he keeps it low, and it's going down towards that corner, sitting down, sitting down. Wessa comes away from in the corner. There's the umbrella, the red and white umbrella going in, and putting him down on the 10-metre line. This is McQueen. He's wrestled down, Chris McQueen, 15 out from his line. So South Sydney have actually seen the football to the best of my knowledge, apart from kicking off for the first time in the game. 23 metres out from their line, and this is a run for Nathan Merritt. Merritt to play the ball on the 30 metre line. Looking up at a scoreboard that says 10 points have been scored against them, and it's early, early days. The Dragons in front of the clock at the moment. We've had nine minutes, and we've had 10 points scored. As it goes on to the right foot of Chris Sando, and Sando's kick is high and going down to Nightingale. So here's Jason on his way back, and he ran into the shoulder of Isaac Luke. And the other little fellow in there as well, I think, is Sando. It is. He's a great front-on defender, is Isaac Luke, and unfortunately for South Sydney, they haven't reproduced 
the start that they did back in round six, the last meeting between these two clubs. It finished 16-0 to the Dragons, but there was nothing in it. It was nil all for a long, long time in that game. I remember Matt Cooper dragging McQueen back over the line when he looked certain to score. It was that kind of game. Yeah, the the scoreline was disrespectful to the South Sydney effort, wasn't it? Both stopped to play the ball now. Getting play back towards the halfway, and here's Dan Hunt who takes it ahead, and uh, he's put down. 32 metres out. Trent Merrin starting the game. Matt Pryor coming off the bench today. He's the only Dragon, I think, who hasn't missed a game all season as it goes down to Reese Wesser, and Wesser comes outside his 20 metre line. He'll play it in the middle of the ground, taken by Michael Wayman. And at least that kick put a little bit of pressure on Reese Wesser. He, he took it well. The chasers had to stay out because they're in front of Jamie South. But South Sydney's first kick this afternoon, John Sutton kicked it straight down the throat of one of the back three as Merrick finds good support in his outside. It's Corrigan it is in jumper number 18, and Corrigan plays it right in the middle of the ground to the right side, Sando, back to the middle. Isaac Luke now taking it up to his opposite number. And Nathan Fien is there to make the tackle with Michael Wayman. What I'm saying is put the ball up on the last tackle if you're in the opposition half. Sutton turning it in for Pettibourne. I said it before, but we all know about the, the savage uh, belting that South have taken in the injury department. As uh, the ball is put high by Sando, and it came down. It might have come off South. It's gone back to Darius Boyd. And they try to put him in goal, but he's now succumbed to the tackle successfully out in the field of play. And then Ben Hornby takes a forward run. He feels the full might of the Crocker shoulder played by Hornby. The point I was leading up to making is so many of these South City players have had to adjust to a different way of rugby league life. We've got McQueen out here in jumper number five. I think he'd love to be getting his hands dirty in the forwards. You've got Corrigan pushing into second row for the first time in the forwards ever. And David Tyrrell going up to front row. That sort of thing. It's been destabilizing for John Lang. Destabilizing very much for the fans as well. As Sauer drills it down to Wesser, who brings it away from his 20 and comes to his 30, comes to Sauer, pushes away from the number six and is taken by Bo Scott, the bodyguard. Mark Gasnier getting involved. Here's McQueen, he'll run. And there he is, taking it to the 40 metre line. Almost impossible to think they could lose so many of their stars. And then you add to all of that, you add David Taylor and what happened, uh, or what has happened with, with injuries and suspension. Nothing has gone right for them at all, apart from maybe the successful return to football, and I've called it Rugby League's feel-good story, Ben Ross. Here's Greg Inglis. And Inglis is 35 metres away from the line. They really need him to stand up today, but he probably can only do that if the forwards are able to match the firepower of the Dragons. The kick down to Brett Morris is taken by Farrell. Morris to play the ball. You're just watching Jamie Soward race up there on Greg Inglis and put some pressure on him. He attacked Greg Inglis, which is the sort of defence that South should be employing on that left-hand attacking raid there from the Dragons. And he, he looked early on where Sando backed away from Cooper. But look at how it, Soward here goes up quickly, puts some pressure on him, forces him back inside. Now that's the sort of defence that South should be trying on on the Dragons. Everyone has tried to slide away from the Dragons and herd them towards the sideline, and everyone keeps conceding tries against them. Someone eventually has got to attack them. Nathan Fien with a kick down again in towards Wesser. And a little, little, little bobble. Well, he's, he's called it a knock-on. It'll make interesting viewing. He bobbled it, baby. I didn't say he didn't bobble it. In fact, I'm wondering whether he knocked it forward or backwards. He bobbled it. You can bobble it backwards, that's the point I'm trying to make. I didn't say he bobbled it forwards, I said he bobbled it. Oh, we, we know that. That's a bobble, that's a knock-on. I don't think it is. I don't think it's a knock-on. Anyway, it's been called a knock-on, so it's no use having a committee meeting over it. It's fair to him like a question time in Parliament here some afternoons of a Sunday. Well, I can't let you get away with it. Well, whether it's a good or a bad call Jenny against his team, South Sydney have to be good enough to defend it now. That's a big task. There's the Dragons, Gadnier floating from right side, left side, Darius Boyd, then to Matt Cooper. Cooper's gone across again. 
Well, Gasney has gone over and made another number on the left side, and Matt Cooper has scored. Yeah, but they backed away from them again. And, and I've watched every team in the NRL try to apply this kind of defence. Watch how South City will come forward, and the moment they feel threatened, will back away. Gaznia out the back. Now, they'll all start to back. Look, they're running backwards. All running backwards. All running backwards. And even if they make the tackle, he's going to fall over the line. You compare that to what Jamie Sauer just did to Inglis, completely different. You can't tackle like that. Now, they've done the hard work. They got out to the 10-metre line, and I always think that that is the, the key part to get to. If you, if you get your defence out there, then you can slide sideways along that line, not back towards the try line. As Gus points out, a man that big, trying to tap him one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-one from a metre or two out, He'll score every time, Matt Cooper. He loves that stuff. Remember Jamal Idris slide in the same way. Like, if the size of Jamal, he wasn't strong enough to keep him out. You just can't do it close to the line. There's plenty of danger written across this game now. Three tries. They look to be in a mood, the Dragons. They do. They? They're sort of putting an exclamation mark after the fact that we can attack and we can be attractive, never mind about that other stuff. Here's the kick again from the T-bar, and it's just away again. So Jamie misses with the conversion of the Cooper try. They've scored three now, 17 gone, 14-0 the score. Welcome back to Sunday football as Chris Sando sends it high down into the corner in front of the entertainment centre grandstand. I think it is that Steve Price who's the heir apparent for the job here with Wayne Bennett. He's got a fair crop, hasn't he? He'd like to be uh, taking over as the, the trainer for uh, this stable of thoroughbreds, would you not? Oh, how handy too to be actually running out on the field with him this year. I mean, that'd be... A a wonderful opportunity for a coach to get to know what's going on out there, listen to the conversations, listen to the communication, and actually be able to get out on the field and communicate himself with players. That, that, that's, that's great for next season. Here's Sauer calling Darius Boyd through. Boyd uh, had his shorts almost taken from him, and then the final pass to Nathan Fien finished up with Eddie Pettibor. That's a great play from Jamie Sauer. There's a mistake They lose the ball, Peter. I'll come back to you both. Scott gets it away, and here's Knight. Here comes try number four and try number two for Nightingale. Well, it's all getting away from them now. And they'd forced a mistake after Jamie Sowd had cut them up, straightened beautifully off his right foot and put Darius Boyd away on the inside. The big fend he was hung on to, but the pass came off the shoulder of Nathan Feen, cleaned up by Ed Pettiborn. Then can you believe it? South Sydney lose possession immediately. Pass to McQueen. He's just about, there's only one man outside him, that's Greg Inglis. And Jason Nightingale, the big fend into the chest of McQueen, who originally dropped the football, takes it around. Lovely to see from Jamie Soward. The poor on the back of the mistake from South Sydney. Yeah, young McQueen there, he, he changed direction at the last moment. It's a good lesson for young players that you've got to run onto the pass you receive, not the pass you want. It's all right to head back in field saying that's where I want to go, but that's not where the pass was going. And he changed direction before he received it. He came mm -hmm. up with the fumble. We need a couple of the male members of the crowd sitting in front of us with a handy girth, uh, most of them. I'd say heading for the bar just to get a refill. One of the little cheer girls, she couldn't stand up again. She's tired already. One of the little St. George cheer girls. Only a tot of a thing, but I don't think she thought the job was going to be as hard as it's turned out to be. Not the cheer, not the main cheerleaders. One of the support younger groups. And this is the kick from Sauer that's right on line. Well, Andrew Johns, 20 to nil. What can you offer me? Something? Well, what about the attitude of the Dragons? Have a look at the defence here. 14 nil up. There's no need for this. Look at that. Look at the pressure. And it's led by Bo Scott. That forces the error. I think they've come today, the Dragons, with an attitude. They want to make a statement to the other teams in the competition, in particular the top four teams. 
They're making a statement, all right. Everyone's looking over their shoulder. So here they come again, the Dragons now. And Dan's almost too frightened to take his eyes away as Dan Hunt brings the ball back 15 metres out from his own line. Here's Michael Wayman. So the two props taking it away outside the 20 metre line. We talk about these top teams, Andrew. They win today, the Dragons. They go back to th oh, third. They lose today. And they stay down in fifth. I don't think they're going to lose to her <laughs> by the look of it. But uh, look, I, I think they're still premiership players. Gazny's on the attack. Yes, and it's gone inside now for Darius Boyd. He strides inside the 30 metre line. He picks up Nathan Fien. And Fien is swamped from behind. 10 metres out from the line. Tackle made by David Tyrrell. Here's Sauer turning it in for Trent Merrin. And Merrin is held by Inglis. 10 metres out from the line. Um, the referee has found a knock on. That was beautiful work by Mark Gaznia. We talk about the battle between Gaznia and Inglis. Well, Tough the Magic Dragon puts a move on him here. The ball goes wide again, backing away. Sass bang, big right foot step. The offload back on the inside. He cut Inglis in two there. It was beautiful stuff. Watch this. Bang. Inside him comfortably. Well, I reckon he'd be up there with the likes of Filetti Matteo in the offload department. Mark Asians. You see, pretty tough call against Trent Mary. He's got a bloke lying right in front of him. But with his evasion, he's almost impossible to stop getting a ball away with one or two hanging off him. Played by McQueen. Drop it away from 10 metre zone and they're almost on the 20 metre line. Sydney down 20 points to nil, four tries. 22 minutes of the game gone. And now the scoreboard still fractionally in front. Two tries to Nightingale, one to Morris, one to Cooper. Then Ross is with the ball. Left side for John Sutton, who drives one down into the corner. Nightingale is back pedalling, takes it well, throws a, a 20 metre ball across to Darius Boyd in the middle, and Boyd is taken down by the tackle of Chris Sando. Here is Brett Morris with it now, and Crocker is there together with Corrigan, and they put him away. First interchange, Michael Wayman on for this man, Matt Pryor, vice versa inside the 40 meter line with the dragons absolutely breathing fire today hornby rattled up in that tackle again on the 40 meter line of course we're playing in front of some of the legends of the Illawarra. as they pointed out the legends many of them in attendance today introduced to the crowd matt Pryor, as i mentioned his first appearance into the game but it's uh, it's a fact that he's the only dragon that's played all games that team, by the way, you, you might be wondering as the South Sydney side gets some replacements ready. That team, fullback Langlands, winger Moyer, centres Harry Wells and Paul McGregor, the other winger Wishart, Rod, Bobby Fulton, 5'8, Trent Barrett, Harper, and then it went lock forward Noel Mulligan, second row Ron Costello, Craig Fitzgibbon, front row Stephen Roach and Craig Young, and the hooker was Kevin Schubert. And the reserves they chose were John Dorohy, Sean Timmons, Bruce Olive, and Ben Crow. Is Eddie Pettiborn on the halfway line? Playing it back for Greg Inglis, and he gives the ball away to the second row forward, Jason Clark in 11, who's out there for South Sydney now. And Sando again puts a kick up very, very high. Well, I don't know what Farrell was uh, doing up there. He said he wasn't looking at the ball. He, up, he was up very high, but it's come down with the Dragons, and Morris plays it, and Cooper runs with it. And he runs into the 14 for South Sydney, which is Luke Burgess. One of the, the Burgess brothers. And now they go quickly across the line. Gaznier off his right foot, supporting his Bo Scott. Scott steps and beats Pettyborn, taken by McQueen and Inglis. And the ball to be played just outside the 30 metre line by Bo Scott, who people have got to see who it was that got him. He wasn't happy about something. This is Matt Pryor getting it to halfway as Fiend as he kicks down towards the sideline. It'll find the line, in fact. Now, where did he kick that from and where did it cross the line? It's crossed the line at the 10. 
I think he was just outside the 40. Quite obviously he was. He's put the arm up the referee, Devsic. Yep, he was well inside it. The ball was played over the 40. It's still a nice kick. It's very noticeable out there, the control that Jamie Soward is taking. He's barking orders, he's pointing to players where to go, where he wants the ball to go. Ben Hornby might be back and has missed a couple of weeks, but that man number six, he, he's in total control out there for the, the Dragons this afternoon. Jamie, stay here, don't back out until it's out. A lot of tall heads in. Today, of course, is National Tree Day, which is proudly supported by Toyota, one of our major sponsors, and Planet Ark. Although the day by now is nearly over, you can always get outdoors to do your bit to help the environment. And for more information, go to treeday.planetark.org or visit your nearest Toyota dealer. As I said on Friday night, that's a better idea. I notice you've got dirt under the fingernails, Rabbits. Did you do your planting this morning? I planted a couple of trees this morning, Gus. Yes, as a matter of fact. Very much a supporter of that. If you cut one down, plant a couple more. Burgess played it. Luke goes away with it. And Isaac plays the ball. Goes to Chris Sando. Away now to the 17. Nathan Peets. Be a long time since you've done any gardening, Gus, I would imagine. Hey, I've got a green thumb. Don't worry about that. It's text to Now it's gone from Sutton and he drives it down into the corner for Nightingale on his own line. You've got to like some Georgia Lawara, haven't you? Because some of them that have got a personality, or they, they exude a personality you just fall in love with. This fellow Nightingale. What a goer. What a goer he is. But Morris over there. Yeah, we're, we're waxing lyrical about the Dragons. I just wonder what is going through the minds of these South Sydney players. They're giving away another penalty. I mean, what do you want to see for them for the last, uh, the last hour of play here? When we call him. Okay. He's got a lead. Season, season, they probably can't. Well, they're not going to make the final eight. eight. They've got a lot of injuries, a lot of youngsters out there. They're up against the best in the competition. They're down 20-0. They're not going to win this game. Um, what do you want to see from them between now and full time? And I guess that comes into what they want to see for themselves as a group and as individuals. They've got to be pretty tough here. This could get ugly. Fiend. And a first receiver here. Hornby just switching there for that particular play. Hornby a dummy half and Fiend at first and then Fiend to Hornby and now it's gone forward to Merrin. Easy, or in fact the pass to Hornby went forward. Here, yeah, this is my pet hate, Rabbits. Why do they do this, dummy halves? I mean, they do it 400 times a game. They do it a thousand times at training all week and then they just go and throw the ball forward. Sunday football next week. It's the Eagles up against the Roosters at Brookie. Eagles versus Roosters at Brookie on Sunday. But don't forget Friday, you've got a blockbuster game coming to you from the Sydney Football Stadium between the West Tigers and the Dragons. That will be one of the, the great games of the season. I think it might even be a sellout at the Football Stadium on Friday night. Here's Michael Crocker. 35 out from the line. Sussex in almost uncharted territory for them today. Wesser will play the ball. He's inside the 20. It's gone to Sando. And he puts on some fancy work before it ends in front of the uprights. 12 metres out. Clark, Sutton, Sutton, Inglis. Inglis goes to Gaznia. Gaznia is waiting for him. Now they're on the 10. Cameras come across from that corner post and it's gone over to Sutton's left foot for the big jump and up goes Merritt. There's the bat back, but Cooper flies high above the ruck and Cooper came down with it. Well, I tried to promote the other game and I've got no problem in doing that because it is a wonderful game. That was a, a semi-pie exhibition of Australian rules. This is Gaznia with it now. 22 metres out from his own line. Fiend, quick pass it to Pryor. And the 15 is out there for the Dragons. John Green. Fiend again across now for Cuthbertson. Here it's been for Adam. And that's a terrible play to ball. Jeez, I can stop a bloke, Carter. 
We'll take a break while the boys have a little laugh at my expense. Here it is. See. pressure, boys. That's our leg up. Hang on. Hang on, boys. Sunday football on nine. What have we got? Five weekends after this one before we go to the first week of the finals. And I'm just looking at that earlier result today. It's, it's looking to me as though... And this is all very much my uh, workings. And that is that the Dragons in the first weekend would play the Warriors. If they finish at three, the Warriors look like they'll finish at six. Burgess puts it down. Cuthbertson picks it up. Boyd is with the ball. Now Gaznia. Gaznia running at Sutton. Over the top comes Clark. And also burrowing in is Crocker, which is not a bad word to use, playing in a match for the Rabbitohs. And there was another wonderful sign of the enthusiasm in the Dragons this afternoon. When the ball went loose from Luke Burgess, Jamie Sowd picked up, but his three outside support players all got back behind Jamie Soward. In fact, it was Darius Boyd, so that they could attack from there. They didn't stand back and just wait for a teammate to clean up. They got back looking for the football. John Green playing the ball. Nathan Fee, Jamie Soward's left foot, and he drills it hard, but it's somehow or other he, he's able to get it to check and come back with a bit of backspin, and here's Wesser now. Put to ground by Matt Pryor and by Jason Nightingale, but don't forget Jamie Sard led the chase and he put them all on side. That's, you know, that's an effort that he probably doesn't have to put in all the time, but he does it all the time. Now for Lowe, Ben Lowe that is, he'll play the ball just outside the 30 metre line. And he has to put that effort in all the time because the coach is watching. He knows his coach is watching. Sando, uh, Luke it is, who plays it to Sando. Sando found a gap. Marcus went to sleep for the first time in the game. Played quickly by Sando. It's gone from Merritt, gone to Sutton. They're on the last. And the ball goes back to McQueen. He's got to do something. He can't. Six fellas change over just Physically seven. Physically impossible. Gee, yeah, that was lazy, wasn't it? It was just as though... John Sutton looked up, he didn't know whether to kick, whether to pass, what to do, Sando. He's looked dangerous a couple of times, threatened to do this. Loves to get in amongst the big men then, throw the dummy. And Sutton comes around, not sure what to do, and just sort of lolls it out the back there. And dribbles it on the grass aimlessly. He should have got a penalty there, South Sydney. Chris Sando was pulled back down. Michael Raymond did a great job to come up with the inside tackle. But no doubt he had a second grab. It's in the past now as the Dragons through Michael Raymond take it over halfway. Big fella met with an enthusiastic line of defence, including Luke Burgess and now Fiend from Dummy Half. Drives it again down. It'll find the line this one. There's a stoppage coming up. Well, we've now got 18 minutes without a score. I mean, we had four tries in the first 15 minutes. So for the next 18 minutes, South have at least shouldered arms and said no more of that they've, they've actually defended quite stoutly and the dragons haven't found as easy passage up the field which is to the south sydney's credit andrew john's the only player we haven't seen in action this afternoon is kyle stanley dean young still out what kind of role do you think that young man the talented young utility will play this afternoon. Do you think he'll operate out of dummy half like he did last week? Yeah, Monday night against the Raiders, he, he played at hooker and defended in the middle, which was, looked foreign to him, so I'd say Wayne Bennett would like to get him out there and get as much experience in the middle as possible coming into the centre. What a future he's got. David Middleton, who does a wonderful job with the stats for us, and does it for a lot of the media outlets. I notice he made a note that Souths will be aiming to avoid becoming only the sixth team to be held to nil by the same opposition in the one season. We're talking about rugby league history here. They went down to nil against the Dragons in round six. Five teams only have suffered that fate of the double duck egg. West in 1917, Parramatta in 64, Manly in 77, Norths in 77 and West Tigers in 04. Stats blokes love all that, don't they? How do they find all that? I don't know, but uh, when, he, when he put it in front of me, I thought, yeah, you're crazy. Well, what makes so, him think of that? Uh, it's a very... 
It's a very strange life that he leads with. See, game there, even though it wasn't successful, they got players back to throw the football along the line to attack. Mark Gassi knocks on now. But it's a sign of their mentality this afternoon. They're getting in behind the ball so that they can run it, that they can sniff an opportunity. As soon as uh, Gasnia dropped that ball, Darius Boyd put his finger in the air and he was saying to his teammates, one minute, we defend for one minute. One set of six. So immediately they switched their focus from attack to defence. It's a lazy one from Gasnia. He looked up and dropped the ball. The moment it hit the dirt and he knew Gasnia had it, Darius Boyd signals to his teammates, now we switch to defence. That mistake's gone. So it's gone to Sando, standing wide, Wesson goes in to score! Well, that doesn't happen against the Dragons very often. Wesser has scored, Sando stood wide, and Reese has gone in and beaten Matt Cooper. The South Sydney will, will not become the sixth team to be held scoreless by... The club's out of season. So I told him he was wasting his time. Yeah, all that work he did last night, going through that history and trying to work it out. Why doesn't he go to bed? Oh. Well, what a great job there from Chris Sando, playing at 5'8". A little step on the inside and then to the outside. He actually holds three Dragons players in the line. And that opened it up for Reese Wesser. That gave the space. It, it was really Chris Sando running and running quickly at defenders to hold them that gave that man space on his outside. Yeah, I think, too, Peter, the fact that Ben Hornby's defending out wide like that. I mean, he got one-on-one on one with Wesser, and it's I sometimes can't understand the defensive structure at scrums, particularly in defence. But he can still run old Weesey. Uh, there's, there's a shot of the... Weesey. Weesey, Weesey, They're a lovely bar, the Weese bar. I love them. There's a shot of the, well, a bit of a shot of the new grandstand. There's another pallet rise at Channel we're, 9 this week. We're along from that. I was going to show you a shot of, of our elevation. I've got to tell you, this broadcasting box that they've built is a temporary. It's better than the permanent one we used to have by a country mile. Here's the kick from the number seven, and he's right on line with it. Six points to south. They're trailing by 14. Andrew sideline. Interesting setup by the Rabbitohs there from the scrum. John Sutton actually feeds the ball, plays halfback. Chris Sando at 5'8, no grips too. It does a wonderful job. Look at him hold those three defenders just from going at the line with speed, which frees up Reese Wesser. Chris Sando, who looked dangerous with a bit of room, like to see him maybe get second receiver, just mix it up a little bit for the Rabbits. Let me take something I, I did say in commentary back, and that was in relation to Matt Cooper. And Gus pointed it out with Peter as they examined the Kino replay. Ben Hornby working one in from the left. That was the target. And the exercise proved totally successful. He didn't go through Matt Cooper. He went through Ben Hornby. And Cooper tried to rake the ball from him as he went to ground. So, Matt, when you watch the replay, please take note. I, I did apologise. Well, ben Hornby not only defends there from scrums, but all the time. He's one inside the winger to the left side defence of the Dragons all the time. There's the last now against South Sydney. Quick play, the ball helps them. Here is Sando. And this time he elects to put a, a little chip in. It's going down the hill. It's going down the hill. He's got to work with it. Oh, he's thrown the pass to Brett Morris. And I think Brett had a foot on the dead ball line. I don't know because we've got no elevation, but... I think when Darius threw in the ball, Brett was actually standing on the dead ball line. Well, Darius is waiting for this to go dead. Please go dead. Please go dead. Oh, dear. Your problem. Not mine. He didn't give you much room to move in, did he? <laughs> okay. Oh, dear. Look at this. Uh, mate, get us out of this, will you? Here we go. Well, Brett Morris, he could well have a caption underneath his name. What do you expect me to do? It's your problem. This uh, dropout's a beauty. It's gone nearly 60 metres for Luke Burgess to carry it back. Oh, he's just flung that out the back. Fortunately, found Dylan Farrell. He almost gets to the 30. So 20 points to six in favour of the Dragons, and we're in the last 60 seconds of the first half. Merritt is with the ball. That's a wonderful record, isn't it, for Nathan Merritt? As, uh, in fact, he's been the leading try scorer since 2006. You've got to consider 
where they're finished on the table. Peach goes out, looks around, Sutton. Ooh, landed awkwardly, but it was a driving tackle by Gaznia. Away from Wesser Ooh. to Sando, little kick, and battered dead by Ben Hornby. <laughs> so they'll take the 40 seconds here, I would imagine. Bit of volleyball there from Ben Hornby. He wasn't going to take a chance. He was putting that one dead, and that's a Dragons play. That's a Jamie Soud kick for Mark Gaznia. Chris Sando tried it, but there were plenty back there reading it from the home team. There's the man. Responsible for putting it dead, and of course the siren sounding prior to the results in the play. So we've, we've had 40 minutes of football, and uh, for most of it, sheer excitement. Dressed in red jumpers. 20 points to six. Four tries to one. As we take a break, we'll come back with the second half of Sunday football in just a moment. Second half underway at Wollongong. It's South Sydney chasing down a 14-point lead. Chasing down six points now on the Premiership table to the team at the bottom of the eighth. Keats is with the ball. Right on the 20-metre line. Merritt came across from his right side wing and gave the ball to Sutton. Move with a dash. Sounds like a drink, doesn't it? Luke with the dash, thank you. Here's Sando. Punching it down, it sits up. Boyd off his line. Sando leads the chase. Boyd beats one. Swirls around another. And eventually is hammered by Sando. Brett Morris. Brett Morris. Dylan Farrell hanging on. Brings him down. Feed, Hornby, Hornby, Soward, Soward, Gaznia. And Gaznia to play the ball inside the 40 metre line. Nightingale, Soward, Cuthbertson. 40 metre line belonging to the Dragons. Feed short for Green to the halfway line. This is the last. Soward. Across to Hornby, cuts out one, Boyd finds a cap, Boyd goes through Sando, taken by Farrell, did he pass from the ground after being tackled? Change over guys, certainly. Change over like is the order. It didn't it look like it, it looked like he was down and just then he just threw it up in the air. I thought he should have passed a lot earlier than that, I thought they'd actually established the overlap and, and Darius very rarely makes a bad decision and there's a, a chance, if he throws it there, all of a sudden, Matt Cooper's two on one against the winger. I know it was the end of the tackle count, but I still don't think we're entitled to actually pass from the ground once a tackle's been made. That's my understanding. I'm just, well, they're not listening, obviously, the, the, the coach referees or the referees' coaches next door, but when the tackle's been made, well. Maybe the ball and the arms carrying the ball hadn't touched the ground when I look at the replay. Oh, he was tackled. They're yet to get a penalty, South Sydney. It's 2-0 at the moment. Sutton goes short into the midsection of Inglis, who's heading for the sideline. But he is not a... He, he hasn't been put into touch. Spiralled away by Sutton. Little chip kick from Sando. Leads the race. Kicks again. He's fallen in the back play. And it's taken it across the dead ball by Soward. Adam Kelly back here from what uh, Chris Sando being tackled out with a penalty. Out of the ball. Interference on Sando after he towed it through. It's going to be a penalty up here. It's going to be a penalty up here, boys. Two souths. Penalty. On the second kick, mate. Going against Ben Cray. And that's their first the of the afternoon. <laughs> All right, well, a try here. Makes the game a lot more interesting, doesn't it? Dragons were racing away. Scored their first four tries in 15 minutes. Now it's 20 to 6. Burgess is 10 metres out, and they go. It's Crocker, and he goes hard at the Dragons. 
the fence. Two meters out from the line. As Isaac Luke gets it away to Sando, to Sutton. Sutton gets it back to Luke. Luke, held by the forwards, had the arm free, couldn't unload. Couldn't or wouldn't. Plays it three metres out, and Pete throws the W and scores. Pete's has scored, Nathan is over. The Rabbits are in for their second try, 20 to 10. He's a good young player, Nathan Peets. He's getting some game time this year. He's an extravagant dummy. He had an outside support player keeping some Dragons players back on their, their heels. That's Crocker going very, very close. It's turned around. And then Nathan Peets with Jason Clark going through on his outside. The big dummy. And just held Nathan Feen enough to slide in between defenders. Big, big dummy from Nathan Peets and then plunging into score. Game very much back on again. So you remember his dad trying. It wasn't that long ago, was it? Geordie Peets. Doesn't sound like it was that long ago. Sando, who drew the penalty from which the try eventually came. Oh, he's missed it from close range. Andrew Johns on the sideline. Yeah, this is the way to trouble the Dragons. It's through the middle of the ruck, blasting out a dummy half. The Canberra Raiders had success around the ruck last Monday night. You see Pete's here, dummies and goes through the ruck. Today I've been watching Isaac Luke get a dummy half. Any quick play the ball. He's really troubled the Dragons around the ruck. That's, that's where you've got to attack him. Well, if that's the case, he's the man to do it, isn't he? Isaac Luke. It's his, uh, it's his trademark. 20 to 10. I think uh, even the most ardent Dragon supporter would think it should be 20 to 12. Sando, he just doesn't miss those. Kyle Stanley about to come into the game. The ball goes across there to Greg Inglis, who beats one. And he's put down on his own 40-metre line. So Clark barrels it ahead towards the halfway. Right, coming to this weekend, Chris Sando had kicked 52 from just 61 attempts at 85%. So he hasn't missed much. You will take, you're entitled to take odds, of, odds on about him making that kick then. Here he is, drilling it down the middle. That should go dead. Boyd said, I'm not going to have any part of that. Picks it up, gives it to Nightingale. Sando caught one in the mouth for his start, and he picked him up and threw him on the ground again. Uh, Nightingale did Sando. He's a strong little fella. And now South lifted by that try. They're putting lots of numbers in the defence. Yeah, and that's good stuff. That's what Canberra Raiders did at the Dragons last week. They, just, they were... They were emotional, they were physical. They got up in their face and bustled them. And all of a sudden, South Sydney starting to do a little bit themselves. Cuthbertson feeling a little bit of it from Farrell this time. Crocker, I'm glad for uh, Cuthbertson's sake that Crocker missed him, actually. This is Green, and they're inside the 30-metre line on the fifth tackle for the Dragons to clear off the salad boot. And he gets it away down towards the 35-metre point where McQueen comes back from the boot, but he makes a long run of 25 metres. Well, they get very good field position, South Sydney, on the back of that defence. McQueen bring it almost back to the 40. Yes, it does. 20 to 10 there. Played by Wesser, it's gone to Crocker. Crocker runs at Cooper and Feen. And then barging into complete the tackle is Hornby. Away from Luke and gone to Sando. Sando for Sutton. Sutton's got Inglis outside him, but he doesn't pass. He takes the tackle. Inglis goes for a run. Greg steps off his right foot a couple of times. He'll play the ball. Ten metres out from the Dragons line. Down in the southeast corner, it's come to Sando again. He puts the kick across towards Farrell. Farrell scores! Came down with the ball, right on the chalk. Dylan Farrell has scored for South Sydney. 20 to 14 now. And the kick perfectly placed. I, I don't know if Chris Sando was just trying to get it over the head of Ben Hornby. But that's what happened. The flat kick. 
Everybody back on side. The chase is good. Ben Hornby jumps. Just can't get it. Dylan Farrell in between Hornby and Morris. Well, it wasn't that difficult in the end for him. He's good in the air. Can we wind back to take? Did I say in the first half South Sydney wouldn't win this? Yes, you did. Did I say that? Don't wind the tape back. <laughs> I'll stick by you, buddy. Yes, you did say it. What about this? He kicks this as 20 to 16. What's that mean, Dylan? What's that? Gee whiz. They've just gone to sleep here, the Dragons. And, and full credit to South Sydney because they have got a little bit passionate about their game all of a sudden. And after conceding four tries in the first 15 minutes, this kick to get within just four points. Dylan Farrell, that was his 13th try in 23 first grade games. And Sando, he's, oh, gee, he's got, he's got a fetish about that upright. <laughs> he's taken a little scrape of paint off it. 2016, John Lang to retire at the end of the year, retires back in his seat at the moment. <laughs> Welcome back to Sunday football. <laughs> Wessa, Wessa giving it off to Burgess, and Burgess 15 metres out from his line. Well, Monday night, the Dragons led by 12 points at half time, and I'm led to believe that one putter on TAB Sportsbet had $50,000 on the Dragons at $1. three. just assuming that was a quick way to pick up $1,500. Well, of course, Josh Dugan scored in the last minute, and uh, that money went down... I don't know whether he reinvested when they led by 14 at half time today. All of a sudden, Inside. it's game on here. This is a 40 20 chance. Sando's kick taken by Brett Morris and he brings it from the 10. He's held on the 20, but look at the chase. The chase is, is keener. The tackling is more, more ferocious. The numbers are higher in the defensive department. Now, here's Ben Hornby thinking about giving it to Cooper to try and put him around the outside of Merritt, but he plays the ball on the 30-metre line, and Green goes up, and he's hit by the 17 for the Rabbits, and that's Pete's. Just think back to the first 15 minutes where the Dragons were playing free and easy, and the ball was sizzling across the field. Now look at this. They lead by four, and all of a sudden, all the football's gone out of them. It is bumbling their way down, a terrible kick from Hornby. Green fielding and giving it to Wessel to take back. 35 metres out from his own line, the Queen, the run for Dunny Half, who gets out of the leg rope. Is this a Mirage Rabbits or have they got the wobbly boot on him? I don't know, but I know one thing. It's uh, re injected this game with some interest. At one stage, it was almost like a training gallop for the Dragons, and here's Big Greg getting rid of one that was Cuthbertson. Taken by Stanley Lowe and over the top by Ben Cray, and he just got up a little bit gingerly. This has gone away now from Burgess and gone through to McQueen, and McQueen has wrestled down by Bo Scott. And they'll play the ball inside the 30 metre line. The Rabbits again, Sando again, the kick again. Farrell's after it again. The ball is there for him. He's got He's a score on it, Farrell. He's, He's got another try here, Farrell. Well, he doesn't outside. score in ones, he normally scores in threes. Smithy, I just want to check the This is number two. I think he's got it. Outside, well, the referee has said he's happy with the grounding. All we're going back upstairs for is to see if he is behind the kicker, Chris Sando. And you would have to believe that he couldn't have got himself offside. It's the last tackle. He knows a kick's coming. They are well back when the ball's passed. He gets close, Farrell, but from that shot... I couldn't rule him offside. No, that's OK. Now, that's all the referee has asked for. He said he was quite happy with the collision in the in goal. Now that it's gone to the video referee, I guess he will second guess that because Farrell does take a man out and then puts his hand on the ball. I think that's fair game. Yeah. Now, the referee on the field has said fair play. I think that's fair. Well, Morris has played at the ball. He's fair game. That's exactly. fair game. That's, that's a right. try. That's a try. That's a try. South Sydney are going to be in front here. Rabbits. As, as a matter of fact, I can't quite work out when the referee said, I'm, well, there it is, it's a try. Farrell has got a double. 
So when the ref said, look, I'm happy with everything that's happened up here, all I want to check is onside, why do they go any further? Don't want to labour the point. That, that conversion that hit the upright would have already seen South Sydney in front if successful. The kick was a beauty from Chris Sando. I, I, when it left the boot, I thought, oh, gee, why not go high again? But his placement was perfect. Just in there, stabbed away. Nobody can get to it on the full. Bouncing rugby league ball can do anything. And certainly got Brett Morris and Darius Boyd into a, a tiz at the back there. And Dylan Farrell kept the pressure on by chasing. It's got very dark here. The lights have come on. It's really dark here at the ground. You won't feel like that on your screen, but... He hit the upright from this exact spot only moments ago. Chrissy Sando! Oh, don't tell me. He's, That's he's got again, it. Russ. He's got it, but you've got to close your eyes. Andrew John, sideline. Yeah, it's very similar to last week when the, when the Dragons got rolled by the Canberra Raiders. It, the Dragons have stopped playing. In this competition, you cannot stop playing. But what about the South Sydney team? I apologise to their fans. I wrote them off also. Great fighting qualities in that club. Savage kickoff then. Match very much alive again. <laughs> Luke Burgess. It's, it's, a lot. it's been resuscitated unbelievably. So Penny Bourne is with it now. Now the results from the other games today. The Warriors beat the Raiders 29 to 10. And have a look at this result. Knights over the Titans 50 to 20. John Cartwright, I think, still in hospital. And, John, if you are watching, somebody would be able to pass it on. From all of us, all the best for a speedy recovery. But that result won't help you much. No, don't tell him the score. Keep him sedated. That makes the Knights the first team this season, I think, to score 50 points, are they? Well, you know, you've just been talking to David, to David Middleton. Here's the kick from Sutton down to Nightingale. And here comes Jason. And there's Sando with his right shoulder leading the way. And Luke Burgess getting down there. Here's Darius Boyd now. And Pete's it is that makes the tackle. Well, what they've got to try and do is deflate the, uh, the Rabbitohs now. They're high on confidence. They're high on ego. This is Stanley wrestled down by Farrell. I need to avoid giving away a penalty. Can't give the Dragons consecutive sets. As Brett Morris nearly gets his way through the tackle of Burgess. Hornby giving it off for Dan Hunt, and he's picked up by Peets and taken to ground. Played by Dan. Sandwich kicks out of dummy half, and he... Oh! It's out on the full! I think it's landed on the line. Well, the wheels have come off. Bristling with enthusiasm and confidence early in the game. Now it's a rabble. Hits the line, that's out. The Dragons have just stopped playing. Mm, Clark. I've never seen anything like this. 22 to 20. If we could just somehow or other rewind the tape. I'd have to go back to where he said it. But I, I don't quite know how we technically do that. Played by Sando, Sutton for Ben Ross, and they charge. Fifteen away from the line. Here's Sutton now, here's Inglis now, now Wesser. Wesser out the back door, picked up by Isaac, looks around the little boat, got the arm free, looking to unload, still looking to unload, won't go down. Now he does, under Dan Huff. The last coming up as it comes away for Sutton. He toe pokes it in. They're going to get another set. <laughs> this is all one way traffic. It's all one way traffic. There must be a slope on this ground rolling down towards the southern end. South Sydney are giving the Dragons a footballing lesson here in Wollongong this afternoon. You wouldn't have thought that was the headline <laughs> Up an hour ago. Good wow. To, good to see John Sutton take the responsibility with Chris Sando on the other side. That's a big restart from Jamie Sowd. And what about the effort from Isaac Luke? Pound for pound, he's got to be the strongest in the NRL, surely. Five minutes from half time, the score was 20 nil Dragons. 
Peets. He's added something, this fellow, Nathan Peets, since he came on. They're 20 yards. Luke across, Sando through, Sutton on. And that's Pettyborn wide. He'll play the ball, 10 out, pants down around his ankles. Then it's come from Sutton, Sando, Ross, and Ross has taken. Prior's mm. tackle got up high. Hold there, hold He'll get there, up there. groggy, Ross. But he plays the ball. That was, that was gentlemanly, really. Now, the Darius Boyd is grounded in oh, goal. Another Sando. set. Sando. Yeah. Chris, Chris, just walk away, mate. It's another set. Chris Sando. He was out, Darius Boyd, and Sando put him back in. All right, we'll, we'll just take a break as we wait for this line dropout. We'll come back in a moment. Back for the line dropout, 22 to 20 in favour of Souths, who were down 20 to nil at the 35th minute of the game. 18 minutes later, 23 minutes later, they're in front, 22 to 20. Luke creating havoc every time he handles the ball. Plays it now, back for his captain, Crocker. And here's Ross ahead who probably could have faked, well, well, he wouldn't have been faking because he dead set took a high shot, but he didn't stay down and milk the penalty. Here's English standing, and he's ridden there by Bo Scott and eventually put to ground. 11 metres away from the St George Illawarra line. Now for Clark, and he dummies before the line. Five tackles gone for the red and green. Played back to Sutton, given to Sando, then to Wesser. Wesser to Farrell. Farrell gets it back to Wesser. Wesser goes back and gives it to Sando. He's got a kick. He does now. He kicks across towards Inglis, but it's miles too big. Take it in the centre. Take it in the centre. On the cross. On the cross. When you're ready. Take it when you're ready. Nightingale. Quickly back for the restart. Penalty. Penalty to the Dragons. Yeah, no, that is a bit odd, isn't it? But that's, that's the way. It's really strange it. that when they're penalised for being offside, the penalty goes back to the 20 metre mark where you're supposed to take the tap. I would have thought the best advantage for the Dragons here is to have the penalty where Nightingale is brought down. I think they need to change that. Well, you, you, heard, you heard the referee there. He's, he said to one of the dragons players he said it is a bit strange isn't it yeah well it is and, it, and it's they're going to have to change it because we've now got a high incidence of those quick taps trying to get paid. here's ben cray with the ball for the dragons and he's lost the ball it's a penalty against oh, um, south it's yeah. against south andrew john sideline with an injury up, update up, yeah ben low the back row for south he, he succumbed to an ankle injury he won't be back and young dylan farrell the sign when he scored the try, as here we see the penalty, the rake out by Pete. Young Dylan Farrell, when he done that sign, that's an end to his hometown of now, so they should be proud of him. Two tries. It's Joe with brilliant reporting from the sideline. Stanley now. Over to Sarah. Sarah away. Ben Hunt wide, running at Luke. Clark goes in. They pile some numbers in into the tackle with Petty Bourne. Here's Hornby, Hornby back for Boyd, Boyd for Cooper, danger, but Cooper's tackle. Matt Cooper playing it to Brett Morris inside the 10. Then to Hornby, right footed, he goes back looking for Cooper again, but he's flung to ground. Good line speed from the Dragons getting up quickly. Cooper, dummy half, through to first, and then it's gone to second, that's Wayman. Sorry, I mean the Rabbitohs. So Wayman to play the ball, 10 out. Middle of the ground. Michael Wayman plays the ball. Now goes off the toe of Soward, fielded by Peets. Tackled by Hunt. That was an important set of six there for South Sydney in defence. If they'd have given up their lead straight away the first time the Dragons come down, it would have lifted the Dragons enormously. But as it was, it was a good set of six in defence and a pretty average set of six in attack Strong from the home side. Ben Ross carrying players. The Rabbits with McQueen. Picked up by Bo Scott. Up the top by Dan Hunt. He plays the ball. 30 yard Petty Board with Gusto. Eddie playing the ball. Five gone. Oh, Isaacs. 
made a complete mess of it. Advantage plays. It's advantage to Wayman. Yeah, he whoops that one. Costello gets it to Cray and is immediately put down by Clark. Look at that. You throw it and you go, whoops. He played a large part in this fight back, Isaac Luke, but that is a blemish that I, I hope doesn't come back to hurt him. Here's Hornby. It's found Boyd. They've got the overlap and he has to do that, Nathan Merritt. He's knocked on, but there was a try coming if he doesn't do something like that. Yeah, but at least they came forward. And that, that's much better than what we saw in the first half. Look, they'll actually get outnumbered three on two. But if you stand back and back away from them, you'll get caught out. Merritt goes to back away, but then he decides, no, I'm not going to let that happen again. I'll come forward and make a play at the ball. And he stopped a certain try. I, I, I'd rather they do that than back away the way they have been. Frustration for the home side, though. Well, what's your gut feel here, Rabbits? Will they get out of this? I they, well, I, I think they will. Get in, get but in. I'll tell you what, we've had an enjoyable ride watching this comeback. Hornby comes away, blindside. Ben Ross breaking quickly. He, together with Crocker, making the tackle. 15 out from the line. They go to the middle. Dan Hart charges towards the uprights. Clark is there. He's been good in defence. Pete's again involved. Then Stanley, now Soward, his boy, and he turns it back in for Gaznia. He runs backwards and around, and Gaznia still going across the park and eventually taken by Crocker. But they didn't make any progress. Here is Cooper dancing, put down nine metres away from the line. Sando a piece of the tackle, Gaznia. And here's Ben Cray with the ball, loses the ball. Nathan Merritt was almost on his way. Brett Morris pulled him down. Ben Ross runs the ball out of Trent Merrin. Good defence South Sydney. Came up both sides, kept going forward. Frustrated the Dragons into error. And Nathan Merritt quick play the ball as Jason Clark tackled just outside his own 30. John Lang, he's up, he's animated. He certainly is. Uh, this contest on the field between Inglis and Gaznia, their last meeting. But Lang and Bennett, their last meeting. They first came together as players in the early 70s. They came together as coaches in 1981. So that drama off the field is being played out and very dramatically by John Lang, as it always is. Ball kicked down the ground by Sando. Raked in by Boyd. Gives it to Nightingale. Nightingale looks at Boyd and says, here, you have a go. Got rid of Luke, tries to get rid of another, but he's taken by David Tyrrell. Played back for Sando, given to Morris, and Morris loses his footing, gets up and goes again. And Clark it is, dragged along the ground. It's played and Sauer goes away to Cray, and Cray tries to shoulder through. Tackled by Sando, the Dragons to the halfway, Scott it is, down the left side. Eight metres into South Territory. The clock now inside the 14-minute marker. Hornby to Stanley, Stanley to Gaznia. Gaznia and Inglis, they come eye to eye. The ball to ground, Nightingale has got it on the far side of the ground. Played on the eastern touchline. Back for Stanley, and then it's gone to Soward, who beats Crocker and then gets away from the 15, which was Tyrrell, and he puts a kick in. The Queen has got it, Nightingale is with him. One-on-one -on -one steal, and it's picked up by McQueen. It's play on South Sydney. I hate that rule. Wesser there. Coming away from the eastern touch line. That line he's on is the 20-metre line, his own end of the ground. Inglis is with it now. 22 to 20. This is McQueen. He's taken. The ball comes loose. How's that not a knock-on? You've lost the ball. Oh, gee, that's silly. I agree with I agree with you in that instance. There's no doubt about it. Oh, not Isaac Luke again. <laughs> I think he recovered it as he did. <laughs> did he not drop that? Oh, the referee said he didn't. He did for a while. Oh, he oh, dropped it. Of course oh, he dropped yeah, he it. He did. He dropped, he dropped it, it twice. <laughs> What's going on, Rabbits? I don't know. Why do you keep asking the impossible question? Sando boots it over the sideline.
So the winger drops it on, the stuff. dummy half knocks it on. What's going on? Oh, thank goodness he kicked it into touch. Bit of sanity back now. 22 to 20 as we take a break. Welcome back, Sunday football, and what and what an episode of Sunday football. Here's Isaac. Yeah, he's knocked on for sure. He picked it up off the knock-on, then caught it before it hit the ground the second time. But what about the original? Anyway, here's the scrum going down. Ten out from the Dragons line. Sunday football. Thanks for joining us. And stay with us on nine. Right through the night. 6 o'clock the news, 6.30 the block, 7.30, 60 minutes, and then 8.30 Angels and Demons with Tom Hanks and Ewan McGregor. Is it not, Peter? That's him, mate. It's Trent Merrin takes it forward. This is the sequel to The Da Vinci Code, isn't it, Gus? Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. And Ewan McKenzie's not in it. It's gone away to Hornby. Hornby on the board, yes. You had Ewan McKenzie in it before half time. It's now, now become McGregor. Gasly has short ball, knocked down by South. Or was it knocked down by South? They're playing on. Now he's calling it back. Well, we're just about to go under 11 minutes here, and I cannot believe what I have seen here this afternoon. After 15 minutes of play, I'm trying to think up ways of how we're going to make an entertaining game out of a 50-nil scoreline, because the Dragons were just all over them. And then I'm th asking, well, what's going through the South Sydney boys' heads? How are they going to keep themselves competitive here? Competitive? They're now in front, and there's 10 minutes to go. And the Dragons aren't looking all that squeezy. Here's Gaznier coming from the other side of the ground to make the numbers on the left-hand side. He's done it a few times today. Raymond charges up the middle. Determination written right across the run. Stanley for Hornby, and Hornby to Cray, and Cray is met by Farrell. And now it's Ben Hornby who's taken a lot more control of the football team. He goes to Dummy Half and passes to Dan Hunt, who acts as a pivot before the ball finds Soward. And Soward will play the ball. 25 metres out from the South Sydney line. Over it comes to Trent Merrin, and Merrin is 15 out from the line. Held and put to ground eventually. Stanley there, looking around for Soward or Hornby. Goes to the ladder, goes to Boyd, puts a little kick in, South have cleaned it up. Nice play by Darius Boyd. He has got a lot of options. He can throw the long ball, the short ball, step back inside, and the pleasing fact about his foot, he's also got this little kick. And under pressure, that's not easy to execute off the right leg going to his left and feather it into the end goal like that to get the restart. It's a, a lovely little acquisition to his game. And they've used up a lot of energy, the South Sydney team, defensively in the last five minutes. The crowd, they're booing. They want the, the quicker restart. They'll be doing well here, South, to hold out. They're just losing a little bit of intensity in their defence coming up now. Quick comment from Andrew John sideline. Yeah, the Dragons to win. They must come to their left. The, the South Sydney team looking nervous. That pet play with Boyd at the back. Here's Nathan Fee coming left side to Wayman, but Crocker hits him with one of his trademark tackles. And I see that John Lang has put um, young Pete back into the game. He was good for him. He brought him to the bench, but he's put him back into the game quickly. Now Fee, right side play. Merrin light on his feet for a big man. Nine away. Played back for Fee. Right side. Salad puts a little kick in. And and have gone over the dead ball line by an inch or two in front of Gaznia. Oh, he was flying, Mark Gaznia. It looked like that the deflection was going to be a favourable one. Jamie Sowert sees Gaznia coming. And, oh, it wasn't much in it, was there? 22 to 20. Under eight minutes to go now. As South pull off one of the great comebacks. Well, St George was scoring their tries so comfortably early in the game, but now when they need one, they're really struggling to get the right pass at the right time. What a drop out there from Crescendo. It's nearly gone 60 metres and had height. 
Oh, he's got dynamite in that right foot. Played by Hunt. Waverman, oh, Crocker again comes up and hits him with his shoulder. And Peach was in the tackle as well. Yeah, that's literally a captain's knock, that one. Now it's, uh, it's Hornby who's down. Just inside the 30-metre line. That should be a penalty. It should have been a penalty, but Fien got it away eventually to Sowett. Sowett on to Gaznia. Gaznia got inside um, Inglis on that occasion. 12 metres out from the line. The Dragons on the attack now. Fien it is. Across. Gets it to Hornby. Gets it to Boyd. Gets it to Cooper. Cooper scores! Cooper! Cooper scores for his second time. Well, they've had to put their foot right on the pedal. They're in top gear to get out of this. Andrew John's asking, you shall receive. Come to the left-hand side, and that's what the Dragons have done. They didn't panic. Lovely second-man pass there, and again... Darius Boyd on to Matt Cooper, who again up against Chris Sando close to the line. We saw that first half and it was the same result again. Yeah, the beauty of this play is that they tried it from the far side of the field. Now, in the last 10 minutes, as they've tried to get the try they want, they've come left a number of times, but they've come from sort of 30 metres in from touch, 40 metres in from touch, you know, at 50% of the field. They've even tried from 60% of the field to come back. That time they took 90% of the field. And they put two plays in before they actually got the ball out to where Darius Boyd was. So it was the third play in the sequence. He ate up more of the defence, got South going backwards again, and then Cooper was able to muscle his way into the end goal. It's the same play, but it just depends where the play the ball is leading up to it on what they can put into their play as they come across the field. That time they used the full width of the field to do it. It was great. Ray, the try scorers have got to say something about where they've had success and where they've attacked. Cooper a double, Nightingale a double, and Morris a score. Two wingers and an outside back. Outside centre. Sowett from the sideline again. And has he pulled it across the face? He has. So the score line, still two points. Dragons 24, South 22. Now remember on Monday night against the Raiders, they did get to the front in the dying stages again there too, only to have it pulled away from them by the Raiders. So the Dragons won't be taking this for granted that this one's over. There's still plenty of time. Four minutes 40. Andrew John sideline. Yeah. Oh! oh he's had him here! Oh yeah! Found touch! He's found touch! South Sydney feet. He's found touch from the kickoff! What about that one? Just when you thought it was safe. To put your foot back in the water. Look at this doink and big bounce. And they just look at each other and go, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't right. Look at the animation on the face of Chris Sando. Well, they, they scored off this in the first half, this exact sort of scrum win. And, and they, they backed it up with a quick scrum formation too to get as many seconds as possible. It was Luke who gave it to Sando. Oh, this might be obstruction. He's gone to ground, probably to cover it up as best he can. St George crowd, they're booing, but it's Crocker. And oh, he was hammered by Fiend. Merrin putting weight into it. Played back for Luke, and Luke goes across, and here's Sutton in for Inglis. Greg Inglis to play the ball. Two metres from the line. Sutton to Sando, under Wessa, Wessa taken low. And he plays it and is a barge over a 10 by Burgess. Gets the ball away, Sando gives it on, Mira gets it out, Dylan Farrell for three. Scored. Dylan Farrell gets a trifecta. Farrell scores his third try of the day. <laughs> Don't look at me, I know what's happening here. <laughs> what about this? It's the the kickoff finds touch. They get the football back. Luke Burgess tries to score himself. Probably wasn't the best play, but he, he put it out the back. And what a, a great pass here from Nathan Merritt.
Nathan Merritt playing inside Dylan Farrell. Look at this for a catch and a pass to get it to his outside man. <laughs> How many times Can has he scored a, a treble? That's his third treble of tries. He did it on debut. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. What have we got left? We've got 2 minutes 46, 2.45. He'll take his time with the kick, Mr Sando. And then the Dragons will try and do what the Raiders did to them on Monday night, get the ball back from a short kick-off to try and get possession to snatch a late win. I have never, ever, ever seen anything like this. What an afternoon's entertainment. Thank Sando. you, I love it. Sando to try conversion of the Farrell try. Which will take us to 28-24. They trail 20 to 6 at half time. Talk about fairy tales can come true. There's the kick. On its way. Touches heaven move. It's a goal. 28-24. Andrew John. He's a little genius, isn't he, Sando? But Dylan Farrell, isn't he a try scorer? That's three today. Look at this, the ball comes out the back, Not nothing much doing, but the skill out wide, beautiful pass, picked up on his feet, and three tries. And look at this little genius, he loves it, oh, how good at, is it? Look at Merritt, Farrell was uh, on the ground, he had cement boots, Merritt knew that was a little bit urgent, and he came from a running start and leapt above his teammate to defuse the situation. Played by Burgess, gone the crowd. One minute and 20 seconds to go. This has been a Houdini-like performance by South Sydney. Well, they should get one more shot. It will be from their own end. As South Sydney roll forward, Reese Messer up at first receiver from fullback. Last tackle now. Sando calling it right side. Oh, good. Gets it to go. Come off the rump of Ben Hornby. He's played at the ball, according oh, to the referee. It's over. So Crocker plays the ball, and that should be the ball game. Tyrrell is with the ball. 45 seconds to go. And this is Big Burgess trampling through the middle. His brother Sam would be proud of this performance today from Luke. And now it's gone to John Sutton. And it's away to Pete it is who's taken down. The Dragons had won two from their previous seven. They had victory snatched by Tanda. Now South Sydney look like inflicting another one. 15 seconds to go. The Rabbitohs get it to Sutton who gets it to Merritt and Merritt scores. Their leading try scorer for the last five years. Merritt puts the icing on the John Lane cake this afternoon with a try as the siren sounds. And that's why he's been their leading try scorer. He's the right winger. He's come all the way across looking for the football. He set up what probably was the winner for Dylan Farrell, but now they've made certain of it. And some strong running. Dave Tyrrell went very close. Good strong run and an offload there. Perfectly executed. Johnny Sutton onto Nathan Merritt. He didn't travel far, but... He's gone a long way to get there. Well, I can't believe we get paid to do this. What an afternoon's entertainment that is. We'll give it back. I'll give it to charity. Give it back. I'll give it to charity. What an absolute pleasure to sit and watch a Sunday afternoon entertainment like that. Well, there's the KFC so good man of the match, Chris Sando. Herculean performance by the little fella. And there go the flags. 34 to 24, South Sydney winning after they trailed 20 to 6 at half time. Well, from Wollongong, on behalf of the league team, a miracle has unfolded as we say goodnight.